All right, so welcome back. We are on to video two of our series of how to get started with data flows in ADF. Uh, from the first video, we left off here where we had talked a little bit about building different integration runtimes that define the cluster environment that you use to run your data flows. Now remember, the integration runtimes are just definitions of the runtime. These integration runtimes, they do not actually spin anything up until you actually use it. These just define the environment. The clusters don't get spun up until you use and execute your uh, data flow either from the debug mode or from the pipeline. So it's very cost effective. You don't have to have, in other words, you don't have to have your cluster spinning and running all the time. You only It only spins and then goes away. It's ephemeral only when you use it, only when you run your ETL. Let's go back into our data flow now. So we had only gotten as far as creating a source and we were exploring our data by using data preview. Now while you're here, you can you can go into full screen mode with your data preview over here on the right hand side. There is a uh, button. Take that up, and that gives you a full screen. And uh, so now we can work with our data. We can explore our data. You can look at that metadata. You can look at that schema behind the data by going over into the Inspect tab. The Inspect tab will give you the metadata. And so you can see everything is a string. There is a double at the end. That's the length. Everything else is a string. All right, I think that's fine. So we can work with that. So let's go back over to our data preview. Now, I was going to talk about maybe doing some aggregations as our um, uh, ETL as our data processing within this data flow. Uh, so let, let's look at a way that we can use that data to perform some transformation. So I see that level is a type of subscription for this radio service, free and paid. Now it looks like there's only two different values within here. Now one thing you need to keep in mind when you're in this data preview and you're in the debug for data flows is that we are always sampling the data and you can set the sampling size under debug settings. The default is 1000 rows. Every source that you have on your canvas will give you a separate setting for the number of rows to limit. We don't have many rows in here so 1000 is probably actually the entire data set in this example but you can set that here. Now you can also look at statistics of that column. So let's go ahead and click on stats. This will actually go ahead and this will run this against the entire data set, not just the sample data. So the sampling is what you view in the window pane. And then uh, for the statistics that is going up against the entire set of data. So we do only have those two values within our data sets. Um, and we have 15 that are paid and 10 that are free. And so I think this would be just fine. Now we can look at the other columns to give you an example of what else you can get out of statistics. We had a um, numeric type at the end here, which is the length column. Now when we click on statistics on that, you're going to get a different kind of uh, uh, data profile for that column because this is a numeric. And so what we see here is that uh, we only have uh, two nulls within that data sets and 23 not nulls. So that's your indication here. And then you also will get the uh, 25, 50, 70th percentile, the variance min max average standard deviation within that column as well. We don't really need that for this uh, data flow. What we're going to do is we're going to do some aggregation. So let's click the button to go back into the graph mode so we can view the graph. We only have the source. Let's start doing some uh, transformation on this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually um, pick out the columns that I'm interested in. So you can actually use a select here. You don't need to always use a select. It will essentially prune your columns and allow you to pick and to uh, names and to alias those names within your data flow. Now, when you start working with more complex data and data that changes a lot, and you start using schema drift, you'll see schema drift as an option here in the source, under source settings, which essentially means to allow Data Factory to work with changing data as you receive it against this same exact flow. But we don't really necessarily need to do that because if we look at our projection on the source, we can see that this is a very simple set of data and we're not going to change it for this demo. So I'm comfortable putting a select in here and being a little bit um, essentially hardened in terms of the schema that we're going to work with. Um, so you can change some of these names and take out some of the things you don't want. I know that we're not going to use a lot of these user IDs and session ID and auth. Fine as it is, but maybe, maybe when I want to give this a little bit more of a meaningful name than TS. Let's call this uh, timestamp. And uh, we have gender registration. So this is the one of the ones we're going to use. Registration was free or paid. So why don't we call this? Actually, I'm sorry, that was level. Level is free or paid. So why don't we call this um, level? So it's a little bit more meaningful. Now, as you go out through the rest of your 
data flow and you click on inspect here to look at that metadata, you'll see that the columns now are going to have slightly more meaningful names. So now we have level type, we have timestamp, and you can see that they were updated with this indicator here. Let's do some, uh, now let's do some analysis on this. There are two different aggregations I want to do. I want to take a look at, let's go ahead and do a data preview so we can see the data again. And then move into full screen mode. So let's go ahead and do some ag aggregations of, let's pick out gender and uh, the level type. You want to do those by location. What we're going to do is we're going to do a count. We'll do a total count of subscribers. And those should be fine for this demo. Let's go back into graph mode. So to do that, I'm going to do two different types of aggregations. Now, when you aggregate data within Dataflow, it's, it works as or acts as a uh, similar to a SQL select statement with aggregations, which means that only the columns that are used in the aggregate are going to pass through from the aggregate. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say new branch. I'm going to call this, I'll add another select after here because I'm going to just use the aliasing feature of select. I'm going to keep every field the same so auto mapping is turned on. I'm going to call this original data. So this way I can bypass the aggregates. The aggregates are going to be here at the top and I'm going to do the second aggregation. I'm doing two different types of aggregates. So we need another branch and another aggregate. So let's go ahead and name these. This aggregate we can do the, um, uh, we'll say this is what we're we going to say, let's say um, uh, subs by um, location. And then for the other aggregate, let's call, will this, uh, we'll say uh, subtype by gender. There we go. So let's start with this aggregation. So count of subtype by gender. So by gender means that we need to group by gender. So we're in the group by with the aggregate. So let's pick gender. And that's fine. We'll name it as gender. And then for the aggregate, we're just going to do a count of, right? So that's fine. This is very easy. We need to give this a new name, uh, the column a new name that's going to be output from this aggregate. So we'll call this count of subtype by gender. Just the same thing we call the actual aggregate transformation. And all we need is a count in here. So we'll just do a count. So, okay, so we have our counts. We're calling a count of subtype by gender, but I was only grouping by gender so I have to add also level type. So now we're grouping by gender and level type and that will give us the count. So let's go ahead and let's check this logic out in the data preview. We'll go to full screen, click refresh and we uh, can test our logic. This is how you use the debug interactive data preview capability in Dataflow to make sure that your logic is correct. And that works. Now let's do the other aggregation which is subscribers by location. So the by, the group by is going to be location by location. And the aggregate, again, is just the count aggregation. So we'll use the same thing. I'm just going to copy this to make it easier for me. Paste. Perfect. And then we're going to use the count aggregation. All right. Let's check the subs by location. This is a pretty easy one. So this should be just fine. That all looks great. So now we have our aggregations. And then we have the original data again. So the last thing we need to do is now we need to put this data into SQL Data Warehouse. That's, my, that's what I'm doing for my demo here. I'm going to land it in the SQL Data Warehouse. The problem is we have three different streams now. We have one aggregate, another aggregate, and then we have the original data. Notice how in these aggregations, the output, if I look on inspect, the output scheme is just the aggregate fields. And then we have the original data. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use the self-join pattern. I'm going to bring these all back together. So I will uh, do the joins. We'll do the joins from the original data. And so I click on join. And then we're going to join this back up to the top, which is the count of subs. There we go. And then we'll use the an ID for this. So the ID that we're going to use, so this is not, there is a timestamp. So I think that we could probably use timestamp for this. That should probably work just fine as kind of the identifier. Let's do, go ahead and do that. The join, we're going to say timestamp on the left hand side of the original data. But we can't use timestamp on the right hand side because we didn't bring it through in the aggregation. So what we're going to have to do is go back to the aggregate. We're going to have to add that. So what we can do is on the aggregate settings, aggregates, we can add an aggregate function. We can pick the first match on that. So we'll call this, um, we'll, we'll call it the same name, which is timestamp. So it's easy to match up our, um, uh, our join based on that column. 
and we'll just pick the first occurrence of it. First is a uh, first is a aggregate function, so that will show up in the aggregate transformation. We'll do the same thing for subs by location. Now let's go back to our join. Timestamp, and now we have timestamp. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got, now we are hooked back up to our count of subtype by gender. And then what we can do is a second join, we can now join up with our subs by location. Join, subs by location, timestamp. Now we're going to start differentiating the different, because now we have duplicates in here. So I've not done a select. A select transformation will also move remove duplicate columns. I haven't done that yet, so we've got to be specific. We're saying original data at timestamp. Let me minimize or shrink down my graph a little bit so you can see it better. Original data. We're going to match this up with the top level. Sorry, the second level. Subs by location. Timestamp. There we go. So timestamp and timestamp. Now we're back to where we need to be. So now we can add a select to do some cleanup. I'm going to call this select as cleanup, just so we know what we're doing here. See the default is skip duplicate input columns and duplicate output columns. So let's remove all of our duplicates. Let's go into full screen so we can see better. Let's look to see if we have any duplicates here. I think that we're all clean. We should be good. We can click validate up here to check to make sure everything is right. Everything is right, we just don't have our sync yet. It's telling us that's fine. Let's add our sync. We're going to sync this into Azure Data Warehouse. Got sync. I'm going to shortcut here a little bit. I do have a um, SQL uh, Data Warehouse already built for this. I called it New Radio Table. Let's go into that data set, and you'll see that the data set points to a table called dbo.radio. I'm going to uh, go ahead and say on the sync, on the settings, I'm going to say allow insert and recreate the table. And that's because I'm going to redefine the uh, the schema here. I mean, it's going to be everything that's coming in. So enable staging will use the um, polybase for this. There's not a lot of rows in here, so I'm not going to use polybase. Let's make it simpler. Mapping. Right now it's auto mapping, so all columns will be landed. Let's see if that's really what we want. Uh, I guess we'll keep that timestamp so this way we have that unique identifier. We, we're not using paging. Per page, we're not using. I think everything's good. Let's go ahead and do a data preview. Go into full screen, take a look at the data, make sure it's our, it's good. Now, when you're previewing here within the um, uh, within the sync transformation of your data flow, what you're looking at is a snapshot of what is in memory in the data frame on your Spark database cluster at that time. This is not data actually being written to data warehouse. Instead, what we're going to see is uh, just what would be written uh, when you go to execute this from a pipeline. Now, we only see three rows, and that's because I did an inner join uh, from, uh, go back to my data flow, the graph, click there. I did an inner join on my join, so we're only getting the rows that are matching. So to make this work, what I actually need to do is I need to change these joins to instead be uh, left outer. I'm going to take everything from the original. Same thing with the second join, left outer. Now we go back to our sync and we refresh this. Now we should see all the rows with all the original data plus the aggregations in it. And now in the next video, I will show you how to land that data in a single DW, generating that new schema, a new database table on the fly in your database.